Um, so, how nice to be here with you. You know, I want to put your mind at rest. When you're my age, you don't go anywhere without notes. Or you might forget where you are or who you are or whatever. <laughs> You're too young to understand that, but uh, so I do have my notes here in case you wonder, well, she, will she forget what she's talking about? I've got my notes, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> but first of all, I want to say that, yes, Tim and Beverly started this school, but it wasn't Tim and Beverly. It was God's school. God laid it on our hearts, and so I like to refer to it as God's Christian school. <laughs> He just used Tim and Beverly to get the ball rolling, and that's what we did. Well, when David asked me to speak about how the school system started, I am going to go way, way back. You know, we're talking about so long ago that some of you weren't even born yet. I won't ask your ages, but I have a feeling that we're going before you were here. We had just become residents of California. We had lived in Minnesota prior to that. Tim and I were both involved in the local public school there. Uh, Tim was on the school board, and I was a substitute teacher while I was raising my children. And then we moved to California, came to Scott Memorial Baptist Church in North Park. And we enrolled our children in the California school system. And of course, we were all very interested in the school system, but we'd never been involved in the California schools. We didn't know what it was going to be like, so we started investigating. And well, during that time, we were busy working in our new church. We were thrilled to be here in California and uh, meeting new people and starting new programs at the church and really digging our heels in. And then one day, the news began to report about a new program that was being introduced to the public schools. It was called the SECUS program. And we were not familiar with this. Minnesota didn't have the SECUS program. So we began to check into it and find out what was it? What was this new program they were introducing? It all started back in the early 1960s. And the California Board of Education made it well known that SECUS was going to be part of the educational system. And it would be grades K to 12. SECUS stood for Sex, Ed Information, and Education Council of the United States. It was going to be spread throughout the whole United States eventually, but California was the test case. We, in our investigation, we found that SECUS was founded by Dr. Mary Calderon, the medical director of Planned Parenthood. That gives you a little idea of where she's coming from. And as we studied the material, we were appalled at the advanced sex material that they were trying to bring into the school system and teach to children of all ages. Tim was so concerned about this, and as we studied it more, we felt that God was moving our heart to do something. So we began, Tim began to talk to other local pastors and say, aren't you concerned about this? Your children, your churches are going to be taught this in the public school. And we found one pastor who was right along with Tim, Orwell Butcher from Skyline Church, and he was very concerned. And Seekers was having meetings with the parents who introduced them to this wonderful new program, they thought. And so at one of their meetings, Tim asked if he could address the council. As a local parent, he would like to speak. And because he was a local parent, they allowed him to speak. And it was very clear that how he stood on the Seekers material that was very harmful for young minds and too advanced. And, he opposed it as a parent of children enrolled in the public school system. <laughs> I'll have to say, after several meetings and heated discussions, the council very clearly told my husband that his ideas were not acceptable and they were prepared to proceed with their plan, which they did, and we still have it today, only it's worse today than it was back then. And you know all about the current situation with the sex education. 
But this was the first introduction of sex education in the public schools. We were disappointed. Tim was concerned deeply, and Tim and I spent a lot of time praying. Lord, what do we do? This is not acceptable. We, we don't want our children to be learning this kind of sex education, which we found was what they were presenting. And one day Tim said, you know, if they're not gonna change, if they're not gonna reschedule their program, then we're going to start our own school. Well, that was the beginning. God had laid it on our hearts, and Tim's particularly, and we came to the decision that they were not going to teach our children or the many children in our church whose parents also disagreed with it. And God gave us a calming. The verse, be still and know that I am God. We needed that. I'll tell you, this was a, a moment when we were so disturbed and we could see children in our church were going to be taught this radical sex education. And God said, be still and know that I am God. He was in control. Well, we spent many months, and I'll say even a few years, investigating the details required to start a private school. You know, pri private Christian schools were not heard of back then. And for us to think that we could start a private Christian school, and especially in California, uh, <laughs> So we thought we better present this to our congregation, which we did. We called the church family together, laid it all, told them about CECAS, and they were angry about the sex education program, and that we were presenting to them the possibility, if we could work it out with God's help, a Christian school. You know, at that first meeting, we had 10 of our leaders in the church with us, and we presented to them, and then they took a vote to see how they felt about us. It was not unanimous. Nine, yes, one opposed. <laughs> but then God had 12 disciples, and not all of them were unanimous either. So we felt if God could move ahead with his disciples, God was saying to us, go ahead and do it, and which we did. And we found that it's interesting that that one negative vote later on, after the school had started, became one of the certified teachers in our school. And she came to us and told us that she was the, the one vote. And she said, I'm so glad you didn't pay attention to my vote because this is a wonderful opportunity for young people. So the one vote turned into a very strong yes vote. We found that California's requirements at that time were quite simple. All California required to start your own private school is you need to have a gym and you needed to have a field for outdoor games. Well, Scott Memorial <laughs> was located at Madison and Oregon in North Park. And we were in the process of building our own gymnasium for our, our youth activities in the church. So we had the gym taken care of, and then God provided the playing field. If you know the property in North Park, there was no field there at all. But two blocks away from that location, there was an elementary school that had an adequate field. And they finished using their field by two o'clock in the afternoon, so they allowed us to send our students down there and use the field. The gym classes had to run the two blocks to get their exercise, <laughs> which was an excellent part of the program. But the real work and the much prayer really began. We called upon God's help every single day because we needed to have qualified teachers. We were surprised to find that several in our own church family were already certified teachers. We already had sufficient classrooms. The auditorium served as a great chapel. And Sunday school rooms were wonderful classrooms. The gymnasium was put to good use for our sports activities. But we had no principal. We were two months from opening the school and we had no principal. Once again, we said, God, if this is your will for us to do this, that we felt it was, 
we've got to find a principle. You know, God is so wonderful. He understands our shortcomings and our stresses and all, but God provided the principle. Two months out from starting, a miracle took place. One of our missionaries from our church was home on furlough. He had been a former principal of a high school in Indiana, and he was home for a year. So we approached him and said, Guy East, would you be willing to be the principal for one year while you're home on furlough? And he readily agreed. So now we had a principal, we had our teachers lined up, we had the classrooms lined up, we had the field lined up. We were thrilled that every step of the way, when we ran into a bump in the road, God cleared the path and said, go ahead. Be still and know that I am God. God was in control. He was just using our feeble attempts to follow his direction. Finally, in the fall of 1965, we opened the San Diego Christian School. I don't know if you can get a feeling of what happened in our hearts. We were just thrilled that God had led us every step of the way, had provided all the needs that we needed. The church approved of it. We had teachers, we had classrooms. We were ready to go. And so we met with our new principal and these teachers and it was decided that we would not start with the younger grades. We would first open the school with grades nine through 11. It was that age group that the, the whole sex education was targeting young people, and some of them in our churches. And so we started with grades nine through 11, and then the following year, we added the senior class, the 12th grade. We had 15 freshmen the first year, we had 15 sophomores, and we had 16 juniors. So we opened with 46 students. <laughs> well, we praise God for every one of those 46 students because their parents were so thrilled to offer an alternative to the public school program. And you know, we tried diligently to uh, include many of the projects that the public schools would have given students, such as uh, yearbook, yeah. In fact, I have a copy here of the first yearbook, the seniors book, 1966, the first one. And it, it had a yearbook after that, and I assume you're still from yearbooks. <laughs> I'm sure you are. And the first yearbook was called The Patriots. I think you're familiar with that word. And then even the very humbling beginnings, and I didn't want to laugh at this, but with 46 students, we had a football team. Pastor Jerry was the one who led the, the, the gymnasium and the teams. We had cheerleaders. We had a basketball team in our gymnasium. We even had a French teacher, a Spanish teacher, <laughs> and the next year, we graduated 17 seniors in a very glorious graduation service. I mean, we dressed those girls up. They wore white dresses and carried red roses, and they didn't at all look like the seniors graduating from the public schools who were being fed the radical sex education program. And the men wore their suits and their ties, and they looked so beautiful. And of course, much later, of course, the elementary schools were added. And at one time, we had five or six different churches who let us use their facilities for the lower grades. And then, of course, that was the beginning of the San Diego Unified Christian Schools. As I look back across all that, Tim and I, had many days of stress, yes. There were days when anybody come to our school, when parents pay the little money they would have to pay, the public schools were free. But when parents begin to find out about the CETUS program and how radical it was, and as I 
remember the CEPAS program that wasn't nearly as radical as it is today in the public schools. It's gotten worse and worse, and it will continue to get worse. This Christian school is, to me, it's like holy ground, that you all, teachers and faculty, are standing on holy ground, because God ordained this. It wasn't Tim and Barry Boy, it was God's doing. And so, as I look across this room, I am blessed to see that each one of you are investing in the lives of young people, hundreds of young people over the many years, and carrying on the vision that Tim and I had so many years ago with God's leadership. I hope you realize how valuable your teaching position really is in the lives of young people. There are many students today who don't have the privilege of going to a Christian school. They're going to the public schools that is offered to them. And we're seeing young people going downhill, lack the spiritual input, lack the values and the principles that a Christian school can give to them, of putting Christ first in everything, and letting God control their lives. And I, I get thrilled when I hear about some of the chapel services you have here, that what you're doing in the lives of young people today, who are really thrown to the winds by Satan, and his helpers seek us being one of them. And so I pray that you don't take that lightly. You are God's chosen to be right where you are today, to influence young people in the ways of the Lord and not the ways of Cephas. I think back over the what is it, 50 plus years, maybe 50, six years, since we first were introduced to the radical sex education in the schools. And how God moved on our hearts to where we could not rest until we did something about it. And when I see what's happening now in 2020, with the radicals, with the sex education program in the public schools and the Christian schools here that God started so many years ago. I am blessed. I am truly blessed. And you know, I pray that you pick up the vision that Tim and I had. It was a God-given vision, but you carry that same vision every day when you meet with those students, every class that you teach, every council that you make with these students. You're carrying on the vision that God gave to Tim and Beverly so many years ago. Don't take it lightly. It's very precious. And you know, it's my prayer that one day, maybe Tim gets to look down from heaven and see what's happening to the school that he was so eager to start and see how it's flourishing and God is still a blessing of that. And our Heavenly Father, may he say to you one day, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You are truly servants of God. You're missionaries to the young people in this area. Every day they come to class, you are a missionary in their young lives. And it's my prayer that God will say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Dear Lord, I pray for each teacher in this room right now, each faculty member, each one that influences young people in this school. I pray you'll wrap your loving arms around them and give them the same burden that Tim and Beverly had so many years ago, that this is not just a job. This is a mission calling on the lives of young people today who desperately need the Christian influence. And so I pray that you'll bless San Diego Christian Schools 
of all ages that today in this war-torn age and we're surrounded with disease and turmoil and questions and Lord, be still and know that I am God. The same God that helped us get the school started is the same God that will help each one of the teachers here in this room. And we commit them to, Lord, to you, Lord, and pray that thy will would be done in great and mighty things. And from this school will graduate young people who will go on and carry forth the Christian message wherever you lead them. And we'll thank you in the Lord Jesus. In your precious name, I pray. Amen.